Hi there, I'm Tyler with Point Defines Pottery. Gonna be doing some Sager fires today. This was my last result. This was fired to about 1700 degrees. Um, this this uh, red color here was from sea kelp. Got just some sea kelp down at the beach. Um, the gray from what I can deduce is corn husks. The, the kind of orange curls here I've got from your standard steel wool. Whoa. The green I have is from copper carbonate. Whoa. I also have black. From what I can tell, black is just regular table sugar. Whoa. Uh, anywhere you see the white flecks is all magnesium salt. Whoa. Then I have these black bars in here from just copper wire. Um, so, but this has a nice shine of terra sigillata on it. Uh, the ones I'm doing today yeah, do it not. Looks really pretty. These do not have terra sigillata, so I'm just experimenting. I, I really wish I would have put it on there, but we're gonna see what happens. Um, so I also have a new ingredient I'm gonna try today. This is metal filings from a key maker. So my, my dad works at Ace Hardware and I got the, just the, the vacuumed out filings. It's all different brass and copper and stainless. So we'll see what happens. Also have table sugar, co copper carbonate, magnesium salt, uh, regular kosher salt, and I've got some straw back here, and once again the sea kelp. So I'll uh, take another video after I've got everything laid out, so you can kind of see what it, what the patterns I'm going for, and we'll go from there. Three, two, one. Okay. Hi there. Back again. So I've put some of my elements down here. If you want to come zoom in on this real quick, I've just got paper clay right here. Paper clay that's rolled out to about an. Uh, eighth of an inch thick very very thin here i've got hay along the bottom these are my metal filings right here that i got from the key maker um i got copper carbonate i'm, I'm taking little balls of clay and putting them next to some of these elements because i don't want the surface of them to touch the pot i want to create smoke in there so i need to create an actual chamber for the smoke to occur um that's what I'm trying to do right now. And then once I got, got it to where I want, I've got my kelp pieces here all kind of laid out and cut up. I'm gonna take my pot, which is this one, and I'm gonna push the clay with the two layers of aluminum foil on. Now this is kind of interesting to get this to go on, but you just do your best to try to roll this up. I'm trying to get a lot of that straw stuck in there um, create those nice blacks and pinks down there. I need a lot of carbon at the bottom. Um, you want to make sure that it's kind of getting it all over the piece as you're rolling. Okay, so now that I've got my sagger here, I want to pinch the top to where I still have a hole. I still want to have a hole to, so the gases can escape. Um, maybe a one inch hole. Now, towards the bottom here, as you can see, I've got a lot of that straw built up in the bottom, but that's good. We want some combustibles down here. Um, I'm going to take a little bit more of the straw and just kind of cram that in here. And I'm going to close this off too, but I want this to be able to A, stand up, and B, still have a hole in the bottom. Kind of a laborious process, but... Um, just main goal is to try to get some really cool colors, see what happens. Um, these will fire out uh, to about 1700 degrees, 1650. And I'll uh, show you guys what the turnout is. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, back with uh, Point Defiance Pottery. We finished our Sager fire today. Things went awesome. I was very, very pleased with the outcome. Uh, these two, as you can see, are a lot lighter and came out differently than these two. These two I had at about 1650 for a 20 minute hold. Uh, these ones we got up to, at one point I was up to 1900. I had pulled out um, th this one early to check and I noticed that some of the steel wool that I had put on the top hadn't fully oxidized yet. It was still gray, it was still dark. I wanted that really pretty red rust color. So I took the other three and put them back in, re got the temperature a lot higher before I took my saggers out. Now once it was done, I left, the kiln, left them in the kiln for about 20 to 30 minutes, just getting some of that temperature down. Then I grabbed the whole sagger. Your tin foil should be completely falling off. Your tin foil should have not made it. 
And then you have the clay cocoon that it comes in. Be very careful about breaking that apart, guys. You can really bust your pot. Uh, I took some uh, channel locks and actually broke the clay, but don't, you, don't wedge the tool against the pot. You will break it. I got uh, all the saggers out. Very, very easy cleanup with, um, with a, a little green scrubby. So try to get most of the stuff off. I got it wet. Uh, after that, you wanna polish them. You wanna make it as smooth as possible. This one has Terra Sigillata, the other four do not. I wish I would have tried them with the Terra Sage, totally forgot to put it on, but they still came out beautiful. Uh, I think a lot of the pinkness in the clay fired at 010 came out really nice. I like the way that it worked with the real dark rust colors. Now when you want to, when you polish, I just got this Ace Hardware um, Brie Wax. I just put a little bit on my finger. And if you can do this when the pots are still hot, this will melt at about 65 degrees, the wax. Once it's nice and melted, you get a nice smooth covering. Go down the line, you want a, a, a nice smooth covering, a, at least three or four coats on each one. When, once you get that nice and dry after the third coat, just let it sit, let it dry. This is just a microfiber towel that you can use to uh, polish them with. I like to hold mine like this, get my fingers going, and then a lot of movement. But as you can see, it really brings out the shine in, uh, in the pieces. Got some really good, amazing uh, oxidations there. Um, if you guys have any questions, hit us up on our blog. Thanks for watching.